got back from selling some scrap. Had some a uh, bunch of steel and alloy and copper and you know the stuff you get. And they had a bandsaw sitting there. And I asked them about it and they said, well, oh, somebody just dropped it off. I mean, literally dropped it off. And I was going, well, does it work? And they said, they don't know. It's just scrap. And, well, I said, I'm interested in, I'll take it off your hands. And they said, well, we can't do that. We've got a, a, a contract with a, a buyer that buys stuff like that. And I'd have to come some other day and work with that guy. So anyways, I figured that's too hard. So uh, I just continued with uh, unloading all my stuff. And I got paid for it. Before I left, they came back out and they said, you know, we'll, we'll sell you that for 10 bucks. 10 bucks? I don't know if it works. Don't know anything about it. But I reckon I can make it work because it looked okay. Yeah, so here's my $10 bandsaw. It's a Porsche made in Taiwan. It's a bit rusty. Uh, the blade is gone. The um, rubber uh, tires on the wheels have perished. They're all cracked up. And it seems to work all right. All the adjustments are here. That seems to be there all right. I don't know if the motor works. It's awfully rusty. What I said, he dropped it off. I mean, literally, he dropped it off. That thing was it's bent, so i got to fix that. Anyways, let's take a look and see if this thing actually works. I don't know anything about it electrically, so I'm going to do some checking on it first. Make sure it's not shorted out so I don't blow on the fuses. A good motor will appear to be a short circuit. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's got some resistance. It's overload. The switch is off. Yeah, nothing. Okay, my meter works. Well, let's just plug it in and see what happens. test failed but the smoke was coming out of here which is on the back not the motor down there so I'm thinking there's maybe a could still be just a problem with the switch Let's take a look this doesn't look stock so they've done some modification here at some point <laughs> dropping all the stuff There's your problem. Wired broken off this relay. Shorted against the frame. Might be lucky yet. This thing still might work. I wonder why it's got a relay. I think they're using this relay to use a low current circuit on the switch to make a high current circuit through the relay. That's my theory, and I'm sticking with it. I don't know why they'd use this relay, because I believe this motor is only one half horsepower, or 0.375 kilowatt. So, um, 3.7 amps. I should be able to do this with just a standard switch and forego the relay altogether. That's what I'm going to try anyways. Let's just make something up temporarily. See, just a regular power cord. I want something shiny here to earth this to. Okay, I'll do that. <clears throat> I've got some screws here. I'll just put it into one of these screw holes. And use a star washer. Make sure I get a good earth. 
Put the star washer here somewhere. That'll do. Star washer. Clean this up to get a good earth. Now, just don't go near those wires. And we'll try this again. Okay, I've got this turned off at the wall. I can plug this in safely. No circuit. Yeah, rubber tire's gone. And let's see if those things turn down there. Stand back. Hey! We have a working motor. Just a bad switch on this. So, this thing is worthy of restoration. Unplug it and find a switch for that. Clean this up in here, mount the switch, and then start restoring everything else. Really perished. Frame looks good. I'll probably have to take this off here so I can get to the back side of the top pulley. Sealed bearing. Nice and smooth. No problem there. I'll probably leave these off because I need to put new, new tires on them. If I can find them, I guess they're a standard size. I guess it's a 14 inch band saw, but it's showing up as 13 and 3 quarter. Yeah. See how we go. This is the wrench I have at hand. We'll try that one. Oops, tightening it. Get the left hand thread. Interesting. Well, that came off easy. Got a keyway. So far, so good. So, this has got different size pulleys. Therefore, I can change the speed on this. Uh, I guess you have to do that when you're cutting wood, it's one speed. When you're cutting metal, it's got to be a slow speed. The belts, I don't know. They're kind of, I don't know if they're good or not. They're kind of loose, but I can adjust that with the mo adjusting the motor. This one here, I don't think I can adjust. There's the adjustment on the motor. I can make that tighter if I need to. This one here, I think I'll leave it. So I think these belts are okay. They're not checked. Seem to be okay. Now, this belt is now tighter than that one, so I'm going to call that good. Well, I've got these off. And I need tires. I need a saw blade. So let me go shopping. And uh, maybe look on YouTube and see what it takes to put this stuff on. So these tires... They're, everybody had a different method to put them on. Rubber ones are different than neoprene. These are neoprene. And rubber ones are apparently real tight, and they might even have to be glued on. I would think friction would hold them in place. Oh yeah. They even fit. How about that? So. Um, look at the size difference here. Uh, some, in fact, when I bought these, they said do not put them in hot water. Well, I know things that are elastomers like this, they stretch better when they're warm. Um, now, one, one of the YouTube videos said you can, one of them used boiling water for these, and they seem to survive, but I don't know for how long. Another fella said you can use hot water as long as it's not boiling water for these belts. Rubber ones, I don't know, but these are neoprene we're talking about. So I might go ahead and put these in some hot water just to get them a little bit more pliable. And then see if I can fit them on that way because right now these are 
is a real bear to stretch. I've heated this up, some water in a kettle, and I have a cooking thermometer and I, I measured this water. It's 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'll let that soak a while. And the procedure for rubber tires versus neoprene tires is different. And some pulleys don't have this ridge, which makes it different again. The example I'm going to follow is by Keith Rucker of Vintage Machinery on YouTube. And uh, I kind of like the, the way he teaches. Uh, it seems like it's all very practical application with him. Anyways, he said he was just using rubber tires on his example. And what he used was a piece of cloth and tie one of these tires on here and then just work it on. This is an old t-shirt. I'm just going to cut the strongest part of the cloth is the of a t-shirt is this where it's you know double thickness and this is the, the bottom hem. Now he does this because in other examples that I saw on YouTube, the, uh, they were actually using a block and a, some kind of clamping device, and apparently that can hurt a tire over time. It will um, cause a flat spot, and it'll over time it'll make it degrade prematurely. So I'm just using this cloth. Okay, then he just says just stretch it on. There. Oh, no problem. No problem to it at all. Went right on. I think heating the tire was the secret. I don't think I'd have been able to do it that easily if the tire were cold. Now I'm going to put these back on the on the bandsaw and I'll uh, even out the tension of this tire all the way around. Remember, rubber tires, I think you've got to glue them on. I don't know if that's always the case. Maybe not when you got a band, when you got a, this one's got a rim all the way around. But uh, neoprenes, I don't think you glue those on. Nothing to it. Left hand threads. But none they're very tight, so I'm just gonna go good enough. I don't know if there's an inside and an outside. Looks identical. I believe this was the outside, so I'll go ahead and put that back on that way. Now this is right hand threads. Right, now what I have to do is even out the uh, tension. I'm going to do that using a wooden dowel and this drill. All right, so this is just a quarter inch dowel. Okay. So there's the top one, where it's a little bit, bit of a gap, I pull it over. Good. Do the bottom one now. This one still has the pulley attached to the uh, motor, so... There. I think we're good. Now let's see if I can put on one of these bands. I'm going to use this 3 8 inch band first. They're springy. There. Oh, I have some cleaning up to do yet. The part in there is still really bad.
Oof. I just noticed something. I didn't think I could adjust the tension of this pulley here, or this pulley belt, but you can. That's the adjustment for that belt. So, I don't know how this works. It's like you just, I think you just pull this when these are loose and that'll tighten up that belt. I'll do that maybe later. I think these might need replacing. They're kind of stiff. Huh. Uh, we'll see how we go. Yeah, that bearing is smooth. It's just stiff. Might put some machine oil in it. Or just leave it alone. It's probably just cold grease. It's really smooth. I think I'll leave that alone. It's really interesting. I was just trying to put that on there. This is off-center, as you can tell. And that's off-center because you can change where that goes. It moves the bearing in and out so that you can center it between these two posts. If I go down here, it's way over that way. On the other, other hand, if I go over here, it's too far this way. So, put it right there. And that'll be in the center. And this pulls that in and out. Okay. Ten millimeter. Perfect. These must be bronze or something. But uh, we'll just leave this loose for now. And I'll adjust them when I get the band in there. I'm trying to get this thing aligned side to side. So that it will, I'll put the band in here and then I'll do my final adjustments while everything's going to be in the right place.